welcome learners. In the earlier session, we have seen what is the meaning of childhood in different perspective. Now, I am inviting your attention to the topic childhood as a social construction. When we discuss about the perspective of childhood, we have seen how there are different perspectives and how childhood is viewed in different perspectives. In this video, we will deal with the following main points, different understandings of child, cross-cultural differences in childhood, historical differences in childhood, views of childhood in different periods, experiences of children today. Let we discuss what are the learning outcomes in this video. After going through this video, you should be able to recognize the different understandings of child, to reflect the cross-cultural differences in childhood, to recognize the historical differences in childhood, to examine the views of childhood in different periods, to analyze the experiences of children today. Let me see how do we understand the term child? When somebody use the term child, what is coming first into our mind is, it is a matter of physical size and development. We may say that children are smaller in size. That mental image or schema is coming into our mind. Secondly, we may think in terms of age, the children whose age is between the infancy, the early childhood and the later childhood. So in terms of age, we may think of the term childhood. And next, we may think in terms of the capacity of the children. We may say that they are incapable of body, and mind and next we may think in terms of generation that children are the future generation of society and lastly we may think in terms of naturally dependent they are not independent members they are naturally dependent members so always they need a dependency so these are the general understandings that comes to our mind when we hear the term child. When I say that childhood as a social construction, first we have to understand what is the meaning of social construction. A social construct is a concept created by society such as the meanings given to certain words and gestures. So this is created by the society and it has such type of background. When next we are going to discuss about the cross cultural differences in childhood. In that we can see that there are two different societies, pre-industrial society and post-industrial society. The views of childhood in pre-industrial society that is put forward by Ruth Benedict. We can see that the expert states that during childhood there are more responsibility. And then we can see that there are less value placed on obedience to adult authority. And the sexual behavior of children is viewed differently. So these types of characteristics we can see regarding the views of childhood in pre-industrial society. What this Benedict 
stated about. He stated that children from non-industrial societies are different from western children as more responsibility were given upon the shoulder of children from an early age. And we have already stated that what is the value of obedience to authority? It is not coming up. And then we can see that the sexual behavior, how it is viewed differently in the pre-industrial society. Next about historical differences in childhood. When we think of history of childhood, there comes the name of Philip Erwes. He stated that the notion of childhood did not emerge until the 16th and 17th centuries. So this term, it emerged after that, during the beginning of the 18th and 19th centuries only. And next one, we can see that children were seen as an economic asset within the family. And when we stated about this statement, we can link this statement to Parsons functional fit theory. What does this Parsons functional fit theory state about? Parsons identifies two types of society that is pre-industrial and post-industrial. He says family is a functional fit in society as it fulfills functions needed. And when we think of this pre-industrial society, when we take the pre-industrial society, there we can see the extended families where the functional fit in such type of society. Why this extended family is considered as fit in pre-industrial society is that during the pre-industrial society there comes the importance of agriculture. To do agriculture what is needed that they have to settle in a particular place and they have to do the cultivation. For that one person alone is not needed a group of persons work together. There comes the importance of the extended family. And in this extended family, we can see that the family members work together and there are lot of members to look after children. And then we can see that from pre-industrial society, the next type of society that emerge out of the circumstances that is the post-industrial society. In post-industrial society, the nuclear family is the functional fit. What are the characteristics of post-industrial society? We can see that by the introduction of industrialization, a lot of changes occurred in society. So what is happening? Parents have to go to different places in search of jobs. Children, in order to get good schooling, they have to move out of their houses. So this is all about the Parsons functional fit theory. And the next aspect that is important in historical differences in childhood is lack of emotional bones between children and parents. During the pre-industrial society, we can see that lot of infant mortality rates or infant death are happening. And there is no sympathy or empathy towards them, even by the parents. It is considered as normal and sometimes parents neglected 
such type of death. This is the situation that happened during the pre-industrial society. And next we can see that Parsons functional fit when we discuss we can see that by the industrialization the family lost functions and the nuclear family fulfills the functions needed in that particular society. We know that children are physically and psychologically immature compared to adults and children are dependent on adults for a range of biological and emotional needs. They will always depend upon their parents physically and at the same time they need emotional bone from parents and children need a lengthy process of socialization which takes several years and children they are not competent to run their own lives and cannot be held responsible for their actions. So these are some of the features when we look at children. And the next one, what are the views of childhood in different periods? Though we have discussed some of the features of the pre-industrial society and the post-industrial society, generally the periods of childhood can be divided into three, childhood in the middle ages, Childhood in the 18th and 19th centuries, childhood in the 20th century. So what are the different characteristics that happens in the Middle Ages? Already we have seen what is happening in the pre-industrial society. So in the pre-industrial society, children has to play the role of adults. Hence, they are described as miniature adults in making. What they have to do? They have to look after their younger siblings and they have to help their parents in household work. And for this, children are not sent to school and there is no concept of school. Childhood in the 18th and 19th centuries, there we can see a remarkable change due to the introduction of industrialization. So what happens in industrialization is that there skilled laborers are needed to do efficient work for that in order to gain skill children are sent to school. So schooling emerged in the 18th and 19th centuries. Because of the concept of schooling, parents are compelled to send their children to schools and they have get opportunity to go out of their houses and to mingle with other children. And children in the 20th century, when we think of such children, they are in the media platform. They are always engaged in social media. They are termed as digital kids. They are enjoying everything. And we can see that the children in the 20th century, they are blessed with good parenting. Parents are giving all kinds of affection and caring towards them. This is a one picture. Later on we can see what is the other picture coming up about childhood in the 20th century. Let me go what Philip Aries stated about children in pre-industrial society. The term childhood did not exist. Children were treated as little adults. Toys and games for children did not exist. Children were seen as an economic asset. We have discussed how they have seen as an economic asset. 
Don's Lot says theories of child development appeared in the 19th century. So that there are different theories that are concentrating upon the concept of childhood. Then we have to think why might the position of children improved since the middle ages. We have discussed up to the post industrial society that is the modern age. Why is it happens? In that case you can see that there are different factors that are working together to uplift the position of children in the modern age. When we think of child rights, there due to schooling children were compelled to send to school and there emerge the child labor laws were emerged during that time. Those children were put to work, they were punished so child rights laws has emerged because of these child rights laws the status of children improved. Next one media it played a lot that it brings into light the different ways how the children are tortured. So this media has played a lot in improving the status of children. The next one that is the concept of smaller families. When we think of smaller families, there the parents can spend a lot for the welfare of the children. So the welfare concept has come up. Then the decrease in infant mortality rate. When parents give more attention to children, there we can see that the mortality rate reduced. Then the compulsory education, due to schooling compulsory education comes into front. So it is also taking place. Then the concept of welfare state where it emphasizes the welfare of each individual regardless of age, caste, color, anything. Then the concept of consumerism, when we look at consumerism we can see that lot of commodities are put for sale before that the advertisements will be there. In most of the advertisements we can see the role played by children. When there are advertisements put forward by children the interest will be more, the commodities will be sell very soon. So these are some of the factors which make the position of children improved in the middle ages. And there is a darker picture on the other side as I stated earlier. Why might child today not to be a positive experience? When we think of this we can see that still in the modern age there are child abuses. There are different kinds of abuses taking place among children. Sexual abuse is there, physical abuse is there domestic violence is there. So different types of abuses are taking place. The next aspect is bullying. We can see that in certain cases due to bullying some students are going to and they are victimized to commit suicide. So these things is also giving a negative picture to the concept of child. And then comes poverty. We know that the growing up context of children is weary and they are coming from different marginalized background and different zones. It may not be the comfort zones. So this poverty also give a negative picture to the children. Then comes divorce. When we think of divorce, it created a kind of mental depression in the minds of the children. Hence we can see that all these things lead the children not to get a positive experience. And we can say that what we have seen up to this time that the notion of childhood is a social construction. 
it is not emerge on its own it emerge as a result of the process and the events that takes place in society so in this video we have discussed about the different understandings of child the cross cultural differences of childhood the historical differences of childhood and the experiences of childhood it may be the positive experiences as well as the negative experiences hope that you have understood why the concept of childhood is considered as a social construction instead of considering it as a stage period as put forward by piaget so it's not a biological concept it's a concept that emerges in society hence we state that childhood as a social construction thank you learner